Hey guys, Logan here. I just wanted to let you know before we get into the episode that this week the episode is a little different. It's going to be a little different. Me and Kai, we were recording something for the in-between segments that we do, and it was going to be about fighting games. And we kind of just went way too deep into the subject, and it turned into its own full-length podcast episode. So we're putting it here on Story Dive as a full podcast episode for you guys to enjoy. Um, so it is a little different from our usual, but I think it is definitely worth listening to. It's kind of a, it's like me and Kai's stories through fighting games and our relationships with them and kind of like what we, uh, what our future is for fighting games and where we're at with them. Because, you know, it's it's interesting how gaming is, we each have our own relationships with uh, with games and with other pieces of media. But yeah, it's like our, our own our own stories. So. Uh, yeah, you know, make sure to like, share, tell a friend, uh, all that stuff. And we'll be back to the regular episodes next week. So enjoy. Okay, so I... (sighs) How should we start this? It's like, I we could we could expand our backgrounds in fighting games, and then maybe talk about why we like to play them. Because um, for me, and I, I feel like we've mentioned we we may have talked about this in the past at some point, um, but this is going to be like the the full blown deal. So like I, uh, when I was seven years old, I played Smash Brothers for the first time. And I was never really a huge, because I love platformers my whole life, right? Like the ga- the first games I ever played were like the, the first Mario Brothers, like like the, the NES Super Mario Brothers, like the one you think of, the first one. Um, and Castlevania 1 and uh, you know, Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie. Like these were the games I played growing up. So platformers were like huge for me. And when Smash got introduced when I was seven years old, it was like mind blowing because you could like, play with these different characters but i loved how it played and i had to learn i like i didn't shield back then i didn't do anything like it, complex at all it, i didn't learn how to spot dodge until i was like freaking like 11 or something it took me like a long time to even know that was a mechanic i didn't even know um short hopping way later so i, I as smash games came out i played them all and it wasn't until, because I think my, the first fighting game I ever tried was Mar- Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on my uncle's Dreamcast. But we never owned the game. I just thought it was cool. Uh, I didn't know how to do any moves. A quarter circle forward, I have no idea what that means. Uh, I didn't know that blocking was holding back. Uh, the first fighting game I really got into that was 2D. Um, I'm trying to think. it was Because we had Tatsunoko vs. Capcom on the Wii. But I didn't really play traditional fighters is what I'm trying to get at. And it wasn't until like the past five years that I really uh, have tried to like understand them more. Um, So Smash has always just been like a platform fighter. And I love platform fighters and how they feel to play. And, you know, I didn't get into the competitive scene for Smash until, you know, maybe three years ago is when I started like really studying it and getting into watching tournaments and everything. So uh, it's always been just like more of a friend thing. And yeah, so, so I, I'm, I'm interested to hear about like your experience with all of the fighting games in that kind of world. Okay, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> with uh, fighting games, I guess with... I guess Smash had to have been... It's my first exposure to fighting games, as it were was either Smash Bros. Melee or it was Soul Calibur 2, I think. It was I think it was Soul Calibur 2 on the GameCube. Um Dude, that's a good one. I, I actually did play that growing up, but I never I always always button mashing. I, I never knew what I was doing. Oh sure. Yeah. <laughs> I played Nightmare and I used one move and that's what I could do and I felt really good at it. Except yeah. for I just really abused that one move. Like, yeah, you'll, uh, you'll, who, who do you think I played when I played Soul Calibur 2? I had it on GameCube just for... for oh, man. So, was it Link? Then? 
No, no, no. So it's it's interesting. You would think you would think I would play Link, which I did play Link sometimes. Uh, but it was like my older brother who really he was the Link guy. He would play Link all the time. And uh, okay, uh, I I played freaking what was the name Voldo or Volvo? It was it Voldo? <laughs> Voldo. Dude, Ew. I don't know why. Character. But I would play him with. I would be the black and red skin, and I'd give him like the freaking drill hands or whatever, and. I don't know why, because he, he really doesn't appeal to me. Like, if, if I go back to play that game today, like, I'm not playing Voldo unless I'm memeing. But I would get wins with him, like, all the time, because, I don't know, people would never know what to do whenever I would play him. Um, but I, he was, like, my main guy. I think other than that, I'd play, like, Link, and uh, I would play the guy who had the 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 weird energy weapons that he would spawn out of nothing. Uh, he looked oh, kind of uh, like an alien. Necrid. Yeah, yeah. I'd also play Necrid. So I played the weird. Okay, bro. <laughs> I I also played Necrid. I was pretty into Nightmare Cervantes. Yeah, I think what? I played some Astroth, but I wasn't very good at it. What a cool game, Astroth, man! What a cad, dude. Anyway, so you good know game, that guys. that was good kind game. of my good game. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was like half the cast was banned in competitive play really? because they weren't they were available on some systems but not on other ones wow so they were exclusive characters which meant they weren't playable anyway um that was kind of my first exposure to fighting games loved it enjoyed it that in fact i knew link from soul caliber before like i thought he was a soul caliber character really no so way. when when they played, when I first played Smash, I was like, what? They have Link from Soul Calibur? No. And way, I remember dude. some friend was like, dude, you're an idiot. But yeah, it makes me wonder because, you know, the other versions had different characters. Like Spawn was in one of them. And I know Darth Vader. Well, and so Yoda that was in later. Were... But I'm talking Soul Calibur 2 specifically. Uh, the consoles had different characters. Um, so I know one of them had Kratos. Yeah, so the Kratos may have been on PlayStation, like PlayStation 2, and then Xbox, I think, had Spawn. I think that's how it was. Don't quote me on that. And then, of course, yeah, the later ones had, uh, like, Yoda and Darth Vader, which is crazy. Uh, yeah. Still have only played two, though, even though I know about the rest of them. I've only played two. I've, I've never played Tekken. But I'm getting off Never track. played Tekken, either. I'm uh, getting, I'm well, getting off so anyway, the... That kind of leads into like melee was my first exposure to Smash, yeah. and I I enjoyed it. I did. I enjoyed it as much as the next kid. I got a few trophies. I I unlocked a decent portion of the characters. I didn't get all of them, and Dude. it was just me and my brother to play with. We didn't have right. any, anyone else to play it yeah. with, and you know we we enjoyed it to the best of our extent. It wasn't necessarily until Brawl that I like really was interested in in the smash scene yeah yeah um, um so so mainly it was kind of just like a childhood thing you never really went back to it yeah i i mean i i occasionally went back to it but once brawl happened it was such a such a big thing that i i was converted to brawl yeah yeah Interesting. Okay, I, I can go into my because uh, I feel like I have an interesting experience when it comes to brawl, but I want you to keep keep going through. Well, okay, so it didn't. Uh, brawl was kind of the thing I had during my formative teenage years, and then Smash Four was like kind of announced during my teenage years, and it came out right when I was sixteen, I think. Mm, yeah. Um, it came out on 3ds first like for a month yes and i am this is interesting because i we didn't have a wii u my oh. brothers and i we only had 3ds's okay so the only way for me to play smash 4 was on the 3ds and gosh dang did i play that game more than any other 3ds game i owned i played the crap out of that game wow. i played it at college i played it during lunch, I played it on my own. I played it in between classes. Like, if I were waiting for five minutes before a class would start, I'd flip open my Switch and I was playing Smash. You mean your um, 3DS? Uh, yep. Okay. Yep, the 3DS. 
Yeah, uh, I was like, I think bro, you're flipping big... over your Switch? That's crazy. No. <laughs> um, so Smash 4 was, it was really important to me to feel like this is what I want to be good at. Like, that was the first time that I was, like, looking up guides and trying to figure out how to actually yeah. improve the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I um, very similarly, I had a very similar experience with Smash 4 where that's the first time I ever, like, actually did research on how to do things, like do combos. Like, right. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, well, so. But then I went on my two-year mission to Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, as most people know. Um, and I just wasn't able to touch Smash for two years. And which is interesting because that was like the height of kind of the era. If I understood correctly, Bayonetta was announced, but hadn't come out yet yeah. when I left mm -hmm. on my mission. Like, yeah, Cloud was already like kind of running rampant. Yeah, uh, yep. but it, he was he was beatable. <laughs> so, yeah. And, you know, I, I actually didn't play too much Nintendo specifically. I didn't play too much Nintendo games until after playing uh, Smash 4. I I was like, where are they? What? Where are these characters from? I actually really want to know. And that's when I played the original Star Fox. Ah, and that's when I that's okay. when I got exposed to Fire Emblem a little bit more. And you know, I learned about Punch Out from that. And I had no idea what these games were. Yeah. Until thanks to the Smash, it was the reason I first played a Kirby game for the first time ever. All that kind of stuff. Um. And of course, when Ultimate came out, that's that's kind of you know where we catch up. Yes, but that's I'm where, interested that's where to our hear. Paths cross, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, but I kind of want to hear the rest of like your experience with Brawl, and then we can kind of get into what else you wanted to talk about. Yeah, and it. and you know, I feel like you kind of skimmed over your Street Fighter uh, experience when it comes to fighting games. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I did play Street Fighter quite avidly also on the 3DS because Street Fighter 4 was on that the 3DS true. and I played it, it with my friends. Title. Mm -hmm. I, I actually beat my high school math teacher at Street Fighter on the 3DS. Really? No in way, front dude. of the entire class. No and way. he wasn't super jazzed about that. But I felt, <laughs> oh, I felt great. <laughs> Dude, you wrecked your teacher. Oh, that's great. And uh, shout you, out to Mr. Ferguson, wherever you are. You also You're played. A great guy. <laughs> shout outs, bro. Um, you also uh, grew up with Street Fighter Two. Like, I, did you play it a lot? Because I just know that you were familiar with it because your your dad was into it, right? Yeah, my dad was very into Street Fighter. Um, and so that's how I like at least knew what it was. I don't know if I ever actually played Street Fighter Two. Okay. I just watched a ton of it, and like, I knew a decent me, portion of the lore. Yeah, when you told me, I was like, "Oh, Kai must have been playing Street Fighter since he was like five or something." Like, I, I, that's kind of just the impression I had back when you told me that like your dad was super into it. So I was like, I was curious. So that that answers my question. That's interesting that you didn't really get into it till around the same time you got into Smash. Sounds like 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 full on. Mm -hmm. Um, but. Yeah, so for me, it's so I'm I'm a super duper Nintendo nerd, right? Like, I I'm like oh, there are more nerdy people out there than me, like that. You're know what's more. considered a Nintendo nut. I'm like a super nerd when it comes like because I would say that there's a nerd and then there's like a super nerd, which is like you've kind of gone past the point of no return. You know way too much. You've dedicated the majority of your life to this thing, and that is Nintendo for me. And and gaming to to a larger extent, but you know, just like for like Nintendo was my entire world. Like same with like my like my brother, my siblings. Like it was all Nintendo all day long until around. It was after we moved out of my childhood home, and yeah, I'm just thinking about it. we got an Xbox when I was in high school, Xbox 360. And we also got a PS2 around that time. And that's, those are the first non-Nintendo things we owned. I was already like, uh, you know, 13, 14, you know? So, uh, like the first half of my life at this point was all Nintendo and we would play everything, dude. So smash was like, 
not only because my favorite things to do as a kid were to play games with friends, right? Like co-op was like always the way to go. And uh, uh, platformers were my favorite genre. And Smash had all my favorite characters. So it's like all my favorite characters in a 2D platformer and it's multiplayer. It's like the best thing ever, right? So me and my, mm. bro- me and my brother would play primarily. Uh, and then every, like, every time I had friends over, we'd play. Every time it was a birthday party. All, we're all playing. We're all switching out. Like, and it didn't help that like my, like my older sister, she would always have friends over that would beat my trash, dude. And I would always I could be like, I have to beat these guys someday. Um, and like my younger sister, like it, it was just smash. We always called it a sport in our house because it was, we treated it like, like an actual sport. And, uh, but the thing is I, I never had any other friends that were good at it, like ever. So it was just like me and my brother and my older sister. Like those were the only people that I had to like really challenge me on the game. Um, and when Brawl came out, um, I got really into it. I remember I'd get home from school and every day for a year, like straight, I'd go home from school and me and my brother would play Brawl for at least two hours, like after school. Um, and we would just like grind it out. He would play Yoshi. I'd play Lucas and Diddy and Olimar. Those were my guys. Olimar, I was so good with Olimar and Brawl. But at some point after like that year period, we were like, man, we're kind of sick of Brawl. Like it just doesn't feel the same and it's got that washed like faded look to it and like i don't know so we went back to melee and we were like bro melee is so much better and we just fell in love with melee again being like as a competitive game the game just felt better and it felt cleaner and we liked the aesthetic and the music and yeah you know i'm not dissing anybody who likes brawl here but like for us it just was kind of like man brawl just is slower and it's floaty and it's kind of like janky sometimes and uh melee just felt like a, a cleaner game um and then you know we find out later that brawl was actually super unbalanced and you know melee is still has an avid competitive scene to this day and i think i think that says something about it but um then project dem gets announced which is a, a mod for brawl that turns it which it started out as a it was called brawl plus is what it started out as that it was trying to make brawl feel more like melee um, cause brawl kind of split the competitive scene into two, um, cause a lot of people liked brawl and then the, the other half of them were like melee purists and were like, we're just going to go back. Um, so, uh, brawl plus is kind of trying to like appease the melee people and be like, come back to brawl. We're going to make it like all these characters you, you, that are new, like Wario, Zero Suit Samus, Diddy, Lucas, like you can play brawl and have those characters. Like everybody wins. Um, and then eventually it evolved into Project M, which is like it, 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 Project M had its own competitive scene uh, and everything. Like uh, this team of people like went and turned it into this thing. And uh, my older brother got really into the modding scene, and we started playing Project M like exclusively, um, and that was a lot of fun. But then you know I yeah I, I'm kind of do you have any thoughts on that before I continue? I feel like I'm I'm just I, I could talk about this forever. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of the, like, history of Smash. I, I've listened to the icebergs and the, that kind of stuff. So I'm familiar with what you're talking about. It is interesting to hear, like, your personal experience with it. Yeah. Um, but that, there, I remember there was a question or something you wanted to discuss with it. A question. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember a question. Uh, but I, I was going to say that. You know, we, we, I feel like the, the, like around a, a couple years after Project M, I, we kind of fell out of playing Smash. We just started playing other things. And it wasn't until Smash 4 came out that we like got back into it. And, you know, so hyped, dude, because, you know, everyone has a, has a glow up look. And, you know, it's like more characters than you could ever imagine. And, you know, of course, Smash Ultimate is like Smash 4, but like fully realized. But it comes with its own problems. Um, but, oh, so, it, I mean, I'm curious, because, like, again, Smash has its history, and I've been playing it pretty much every week of my life since I was seven. I, I love it to death, and I just love the way it handles. But it is it is interesting how, as I've gotten more into the competitive scene, uh, it, like, has shown me things about the game in a different light, and, like, you know, kind of makes me think about them differently, because you know, while cer- certain ones might be my favorite aesthetic or favorite feel or 
whatever it's like when you look at a game competitively it might change the way you feel about playing it um which is kind of like we we decided not to play brawl anymore for that reason like we just it wasn't our favorite aesthetic and we also didn't like the way it played compared to the other ones um and it's interesting how like every every like why why is every smash game so different you know what i mean like you'd expect them to be like better than the last just the same thing but better but even 64 to Melee is so different. And those games were made within one year of each other. Which is crazy. And they're so different. And then you look at Brawl, which is so different from Melee. And then you look at Smash 4, which is so different from Brawl. And then Ultimate, which on paper looks the same as Smash 4, is so different. It is actually so different. Um, and so it's, it's created a lot of divides in like the, the people that want to play. Because you have the underground scene right now. That's like playing Project M or Project Plus, as it's called now. Uh, P Plus, people refer to it as. Like, there's an underground scene that still plays that game. It's very small. And then you have the Melee community, which is like, de- like it's a pretty big community, very dedicated. And then you have the Ultimate community, which is like the current up-and-coming generation, um, which is just crazy. Because I feel like most fighting games, like, I don't think that there's really a big theme for any of the Street Fighter games except for Six. And, you know, as soon as the next Street Fighter comes out, they're all just going to move to that one. And same with Tekken. Like, I don't think people are, are going to be playing Tekken 7 for much longer now that Tekken 8 is out. Um, stuff like that. So it's just interesting how Smash does that. Um, and, like, creates these rifts. Uh, but, yeah. I, so I'm interested in kind of, like, your why you like to play fighting games. Like, why... Why do you enjoy, like, playing fighting games? I'm just going to throw that question out there. Uh, it's definitely changed over time. The reasons why I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I think originally I enjoyed it because of the the nuance, the finesse that it takes to really play it. The minute details that you need to pay attention to and the actual practice it takes to be proficient in a game like this uh, okay it it takes it takes real proficiency it takes real skill it takes real time and and effort and dedication to really make a difference right so it's like it, it's it's impressive and it's also like like it, you're you're interested in like the challenge of it like it you like cuz i would say that speed running is almost like similar for me and there's a lot of other things in life where i'm like you know it's something that you can tell like really is really hard to do like it's a really hard thing to do and it's like very admirable to see people do it well kind of a thing yeah and you know i i got inspired when i watched really good players i got inspired to be to think that I wanted to do that. And one of the big things, actually, um, this is this might be interesting. Yes, uh, this is why we're here, the, dude. One of the biggest things that enticed me so much was, um, this, it's not necessarily the same as a fighting game, but it translates into that. I used to, excuse me, I used to play League of Legends a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I remember watching worlds 2012 with my brother we we popped some popcorn we sat down at our freaking heavy crtv computer Uh monitor Uh and we watched 2012 worlds world championships of league of legends yeah and i watched those team players i watched each and every one of them in their uniform march out on a stage and every time they scrolled over their their favorite character the crowd went insane, and these giant banners behind them would would display the character they were about to pick. Yeah. And when they locked in that character, that banner would like flash gold, or it, it was a big show. You yeah. Know, of yeah. course, it was a big I mean, spectacle. I've heard stories because uh, you know I've had some friends go to some of the worlds in person in recent years. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. I I, I haven't personally gone myself because League of Legends is something that's like out of my my realm of information i it's just not part of my 
which is crazy considering like how much I know about games. It's just one of those blind spots I have. Um, mm. Which that that's a that's a something we could talk about later for sure. But uh, well, so I I just know I it. know of the prestige of those and just how much goes into those like the production of it, but also like how big of a deal it is on a esports level as well. Like it's it's the biggest you know esports tournament ever like i think still to this day right well so i saw those people on stage and i thought i have to be one of those guys i have to be there i have to sit in that chair and look at this crowd and like this is gonna sound kind of pretentious but this this was edgy teenager kai sure, right no yeah uh-huh but i was kind of like me and my brother didn't really have too many friends growing up. We, we just didn't, we didn't, we had each other, of course. And I, I appreciate that to this day so much. I was very blessed in my life to have mm. my brother, my twin brother. Yes, and I even my, my siblings, my little brother and little sister, the things we've been able to do together. Yes, I've been so blessed to have that. But I, we didn't have friends. We didn't, I didn't talk to anyone. Games weren't cool back then dude yeah. games were games were the things that rot your brain that uh -huh. you you should get off your butt and be a real man and do real stuff you know what i mean right yes i very much so um and it's intriguing to because i'm sure there are lots of people that feel that same that remember that stigmatism that's mm -hmm. there that stigma that that was placed on us back then and it's just not necessarily the same for no, the generations not. now and i am grateful for that i'm grateful that generations now can enjoy games and not get bullied yes. to the ground for it exactly or not yep and you know there's that is a whole nother topic on its own because i do think it is still important to strive to be an attractive ish a charismatic ish individual because there is a there is a situation where you could sink too deep, right? You yeah. can get too deep in the sauce. Sure, yeah. Um, Total de degeneracy, which in some ways is actually a good thing these days. If you want to be a streamer or something, like it, it's crazy how even that lifestyle can work for some people. Like, but yeah, I know what you mean. Like, I think the stigma these days is around people who, like, like I don't know, and maybe that's not even true. I don't even know if it is true anymore because quarantine kind right. of made that cool. Like I don't know. Like it's weird that gaming is popular now. It is crazy because, you know, my whole my whole life as well, gaming was not cool, and we had to fight for our right to play, and we had to fight for, you know, like the, the, all of the people out here there who liked games because. I, you know, I was always an advocate being like games are not evil and they're not like, like there are such a good thing. I've learned so much and had so many amazing experiences playing games. I've made so many friends and connections through games. There's no way that they're a bad thing, you know, but nobody would believe me growing up. Um, they're just like, oh, sure. yeah. well, once you turn 18, you're going to, you know, go get a real job and blah, blah. And it's like, <laughs> little did they know, you know, freaking games would be so massive. I think if, at this point in time, if I went up to any anybody and was like, I'm I'm a game dev or I'm an animator for this game studio, like that's an admirable thing. Like people that's but back then, if I said that, it would have been like, well, once you get a real job, let me know, you know, like just crazy. So, right. I know, well, I know so, exactly what you mean. Yeah. In that vein, um, back then I saw these people who were gods among men. You know, these people had a skill level beyond comprehension. They were doing things in this game that I didn't know were mechanically possible to do the way that they were doing it. And I felt like I want to be that. I want to be that person for a number of reasons. I want to be someone people can be awestruck by. And I also want to prove it to the world that I'm not just a washed out dummy you know that yeah i that this is skill that this is something that i've honed and i've practiced and i've dedicated time to and it's not just a rot my brain thing 
It, it was kind of like a, I want to be this big to stick it to all the bullies out there. Yeah. That, yes. Okay. That treated me bad, which is not, I, I, in hindsight, don't do that. That's not a great, well, yeah, that's a horrible but, way to go into it. You don't want to go into it seeking with, revenge with the experiences, or vengeance. Yeah. Yeah. With the experiences you went through, it's understandable though. Like I, I feel like it makes total sense for you to have the thing you love totally, you know, uh, uh, what's the word? It's like when, when people are talking down on games and like you love them, it's like, oh, the thing you love is not, it's not good for you. It's whatever. And like, of course you'd be like, well, like I want to, I want to prove them wrong. I want to go out there and show them how much this thing matters to me and how cool it can be. Um, that makes total sense yeah. to me. Um, cause I, I feel like in a way I, I relate, I didn't, cause I, how, how old were you when you discovered that there is a competitive scene for video games? Oh, probably 15 or 16 was, well, okay. I mean, I knew that there were people that did professional street fighter tournaments because as a kid, I did watch that like famous clip. If you guys haven't seen this clip, it's a clip of street fighter two. It is pretty much the like the all spark of all sparks of competitive gaming. Wait, it is the, the thing. Is it, are you talking about the Justin Wong clip? Yeah, because I, I think with that's, the Chin Lee versus Ken. Yes, not not to correct you, but I think that is Third Strike. Um, from my understanding, Street Fighter Third Strike. What do you mean? Oh, like, like sure. It okay, Fighter but II. whichever not, not game it was, yes. I just, um, know, I just know that some people out there would be like, that wasn't Street Fighter 2. Oh, yeah, they'd be rolling in their grave just being like, <laughs> this this idiot. <laughs> Who does this man think he is? Anyway. Yes, so, I know what you're talking about, though. Um, Did you watch it, it live? Just, I didn't watch it live. Oh, I just, my, my dad played us a clip of it. He, okay. he, he was like, you guys need to see this. This is awesome. And he showed us. And I just remember seeing that and thinking... Wow, that was really cool. And of course, it wasn't until later in life that I really understood just what happened and why it was so incredible. Yeah. Uh -huh. But that was the first time that I had ever been exposed to like, oh, these are people like playing for money. That's new. Yes. I, I never heard that. I didn't know yeah. you could do that. Yeah, I I unfortunately didn't really because I learned that there was a competitive scene, but I thought that I was like, well, there's no way for me to do that. Because, like, I didn't know that there was a competitive scene until I was probably at least 16, at least. And I didn't know that there was, like, a local scene until I was, like, like 20. <laughs> Which is crazy. That is crazy to me that it took me 20 years to, like, figure out that Smash Brothers has a competitive scene and that there was one near my house the whole time that I could have been going to. <laughs> Which, yeah. in a way, makes me upset because I feel like I, I wasn't able to f actually, like, dedicate myself to playing Smash competitively after figuring that out until, like, you know, three-ish years ago for me. Um, and I feel like at this point I'm, like, past my prime that I could have achieved if I had started when I was 12 years old or something. Because a lot of, like, the, the prodigies or the, the pros start when they're really young. But it's like, I have been playing Smash since I was really young. I just wasn't able to actually be around the competitive scene and, like, you know, be in that environment, get used to tournament nerves and uh, just have, like, that kind of information. Because, you know, there's a lot of stuff I didn't learn because the internet didn't exist. So it's like, how was I supposed to know L canceling was a thing in Melee? Like, I, there's no way to know that unless someone comes over and tells you, you know, like... I, I wish I was around people who knew that kind of stuff, but anyways, uh, not to like say that I have regrets or anything. I feel like I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at, but it just makes me wonder how different things would be if I would started sooner. Sure. Right. And well, to, to further answer your question, why do I enjoy yes. fighting games? Yes. Um, I... Later on, at least from from League, it kind of had to switch to to Smash because I just recognized how unhealthy those careers are. 
for people for their mental health and their for their physical health and just like the prestige and the actual amount of training and dedication that you have to have you essentially give up everything else about your identity to then be this league of legends player anyway so i i started to work on smash and i was grateful to have a friend group that i played often very often with yes yes um Pretty much, it it became almost like a daily yeah. thing that I did mm-hmm. with these friends, um, and I I loved it. I was loved this, every second of it. This, this is ultimate. 4? This was ultimate. No, this okay. is ultimate. Well, so it was Smash Four a little bit because right when I came home from my mission, I thought I was hot stuff because when where I grew up in Colorado, we didn't have a scene. There was no scene. There actually wasn't. They we had for my for the for our my church. We had a small smash tournament amongst the youth there, and I tr- I like trashed everyone. The only hardest competitor that I had was my twin, you know. And by that point, like I remember it being a pretty kind of neck and neck match. I don't know what he remembers it being, but I I just remember, you know, the two of us have been fighting for years now, so we kind of already knew each other's habits and stuff. But anyone else, I trashed. I just completely destroyed them. Um, so when I came to Utah, I thought it was hot stuff. Even though I was two years rusty, I still felt like, ah, oh, dang, I could jump back into this. I, I can be good. Yeah. Man, I was proven so wrong. I was just completely decimated. And that was when I started to learn a lot more technical stuff about the game and i i practiced really hard and it it became that new ambition of like i can be someone great yeah with this i can i can carve out my own slice of of the world and pieces of my identity can be attached to my success here and i played and i practiced and i practiced and i played and i learned a couple things about smash over time that i just it's it's too hard for me to reconcile these days. Yeah, I um, I am interested in those those things. Uh, yeah, because I, I want to get into the weeds of, of the matter. You know, sure. Yeah. Um, one of the big things with it, I've uh, I've had to recognize a big portion of fighting games to me are the characters. We've I've mentioned before often on Story Dive the the our actual podcast that. Um, <laughs> that i value characters a lot i really love characters i love seeing these characters grow and and feel things and be humans and just being able to experience this element these elements of humanity with these characters is is very interesting to me and i had to admit at some point that i didn't care about it probably about 60 percent of the smash roster i just didn't care wow 60 i didn't know who they <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot it's a surprising amount you know yes but and, i and didn't we, grow we, up with their games yeah if you say you don't I care what you mean is you're, you're not like in love with them right yeah i'm yeah. not enchanted with smash because i love the characters so much i just don't care it, it's not that i hate them i hate them maybe some of them in the way that they are played oh. Or yeah. like the way that they play in the game, but I the small amount of characters that I personally really enjoyed, um, like as characters that I I identified with and I played their games and that I was in love with those characters, they weren't. They have a lot of glaring weaknesses in competitive play that makes it re- like the skill floor to really get results competitively with those characters is a lot higher mm-hmm. than than others. Yep. So as an example, I do love the Belmonts. I think Castlevania is awesome. The Belmonts yep. in Smash are notoriously kind of gimmicky. They they're very it's it's very yes. gimmicky where and, and they have glaring flaws. They have glaring glaring flaws. Things that, that pretty much any player that enters the competitive scene in any capacity has at least some experience abusing those flaws. Um, right. So, and, you know, I could have doubled down and spent more time on that, but I kind of drifted from main to main 
from character to character, trying to find something that I really fell in love with, that I just really identified with. And I, I talk to my friend group all the time. Should I main this person? I, yes. I think I'm switching oh, this person. I, and they I was would, part they of would that. give me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and I, I get teased all the time. Uh, you have a new main every three weeks, you know. And I landed on Falco for a long time, and I really kind of enjoyed it. Um, but that, and I enjoyed how he played, and I got real results. That's when I feel like that was kind of my peak as a as a player. Yeah. I never took yeah, first yeah. in anything, but I I took first quite often amongst our group of yes, like, uh, friend competitors you you were definitely at the time like it was like a solid year or so where when i was part of that group and we you were you were undefeated pretty much like it, i feel like anytime there was actual stakes on the line like you'd you'd win the match as falco and i, I like i didn't know what to do about it at the time which is just so interesting uh looking back on it just because of how much i've grown in the game since then um like i see it completely differently than i did back then and back then i saw it completely differently than when i was you know 16 like uh it's crazy how how your view evolves over time but i i, I agree with sure. you i think falco was definitely the most impressive uh like character you played in terms of like, like you were very proficient with him and he was a very like very good character um compared to like a lot of the other ones you could have picked you know so like he he was really able to i think mesh with your play style and allow you to do that you know sure um well and continuing on with this this experience as i mentioned before the characters that i wish i because i did love falco i i do love falco i love Star Fox. Yes. Uh, when i when I played it, I fell in love with it. I think it's really cool. Um, I think they haven't had a good game in a long time. But yeah, but you know, at least that's a whole nother. I mean, him and Captain Falcon, bro. Him and Captain Falcon. Even though Captain Falcon has gotten even less, but yeah, that, sure, right. That, that, that is, that e is a whole either way. It's it's tough for me in a fighting game to have no characters that I personally were on my wish list of of games that I grew up playing um no none of those characters were there the, they were and and so it wasn't necessarily really until sora that a character that i loved and that i wanted other than there were some that i like really wanted and really enjoyed but sora was the first one that was like this is a wish list character for mm -hmm. me yeah um and Man, did the community hate, hate Sora. Man, do they hate him with a burning passion. They hate Sora. And it, it hurts. It hurts to watch a character that I cherish. So, And, of course, I know that this goes the same way for anyone who hates any other character mm -hmm. of a main. Yep. Right? That's deep to someone's childhood. Yep. I know that this feels the same way for every other person. But it, like, when people when I would be at tournament or sometimes uh, just amongst different social circles and I just hear people spit on Sora and hate him and call him names and call the players names and the, the toxicity, which is a, a topic I will get into in a second, but it, it hurt. It hurt to see a childhood memory of mine tarnished so deeply by people who didn't care or understand it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah um i mean you hate yoshi it, right <laughs> sure i don't necessarily hate yoshi as a character i right. do dislike i dislike other fighters a lot more than yoshi a couple of them i i sure. hate them way worse than yoshi but you're right yoshi was a character that i really disliked yeah um it, yes i and it doesn't yeah it doesn't help though that I didn't grow up with Mario, really. So Yoshi, to me, is just where other people see Yoshi as a faithful and creative and fun character to, that's very representative of what he can do in the games. And it's this, this funny dinosaur that they love, you know? That yeah. they, it's part of their childhood. Yeah. All I see, all I see 
is a a goofy dinosaur with a move set that is a little overpowered in situations where it feels unfair to to fight them and of course this comes with this what i'm saying is it lacks all nuance and skill in my opinion of this and i can accept that but what other people and i going back to this what i know other people see in sora yes is what i see in yoshi where yes. i see this this That's... is unnamed character dinosaur that has super armor has the biggest shield in the game and can kind of not necessarily mash but like can act out of things a lot faster and a lot easier than some other characters not yes. without his weaknesses right and we could we could talk for eons about like character balancing and stuff sure. and what i'm trying to say is i'm not bashing people who play yoshi i'm not even bashing yoshi lovers i'm not even bashing the fighter yoshi all i'm saying is my perception of these characters of of that 60 percent of the roster i couldn't care less all i see them as is these just baseless characters i see them as a move set and not as a character does right. that make sense i just brought yoshi up as like a the way you were talking about how people hated on Sora, and it's like, well, that's like that's what I've learned about Smash is that when it's number one, people are very competitive, so of course they're gonna say things that are kind of rude and mean when they're upset because a lot of people that are young don't know how to like control their emotions. I'm not saying that's like that 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 they're validated in doing that, like that's not a good thing to do, but it's just a very common trait in younger people. Like I used to be very toxic, not not in a uh necessarily like a name calling or whatever but i i used to throw tantrums when i was younger um and people wouldn't want to play with me anymore um and i just had that i i, I there, there was a moment where i had that realization i feel like a lot of people uh grow up and never have that moment so they continue to be very toxic um when like i, I don't know like they get mad at something and they just like take it out and it's like unwarranted and so they like they, they're like man i just hate sora because of this and that and this and that and he's just so annoying and blah 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 like whatever the reason is when what they're actually mad at is themselves and like they don't want to admit it um like i feel like that's, sure. that's usually what the case is is that they'll take it out on the character uh when they've never played kingdom hearts they don't actually have a valid opinion on that character as a character they're just kind of venting because they're mad they didn't win um yeah sure right yeah. well i mean uh i kind of want to now that you have me thinking about this sure i feel kind of like i'm sitting on a couch and you're like my smash therapist to like talk me through all yes, this yes yeah uh-huh yeah <laughs> um uh, uh, dude, to I'm continue on from there i really you know as i was playing I, I achieved results and, and stuff, but after so many years of that, I and still not being able to find that character, you know, the one. Uh huh. Yeah. I. I just kept. I kept trying. I kept trying, and the people around me kept getting better, and I also kept getting better. But I not once the magic of the new of each new character and the love for the characters once that magic kind of wore off and i did have that realization that i just didn't care about more than half the the cast uh, and out of 70 characters again no less it's like that's a lot to me if i were to make a smash i would want something closer to playstation all-stars not in technicality but in the all-star like, like, cast like the roster like that's the roster yeah. that you would be more into i wanted I ratchet and clink i want jack and daxter nathan drake man nathan drake's one of my heroes commander <laughs> shepherd <laughs> yes. you know yeah Mass uh, yep it, you know that kind of stuff yeah was the things that i really was close to anyway so it just wasn't my roster so what was left what was i left with if not the roster to be so in love with well it was the mechanics it was it was the the way the game was played and that did interest me for a long time the like the the psychological aspect of it 
the knowing when to expect your opponent to do certain things and the the kind of game the almost like sherlock versus moriarty's like mental chess game kind of thing you know what i mean but yeah. it, it's in the movie yeah. where they play chess but just by talking to it that's what it felt like to play smash for a while yes and then i started to see elements of the game that there were just pieces in the mental chess game that were better than others and a lot more people started to do that started to play certain ways yeah started to go into and some people would consider these play styles um degenerate or um campy or toxic you know whatever i yes. i want to set aside i want to like make it known that i'm not attaching any of those stigmatisms to this realization all I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is there was a realization that people relied on that kind of stuff more often than to do something flashy and interesting. Um, the, yeah. So the interactions, the, the interactions became predictable and more often than not became uh, something I couldn't do anything about. If that makes sense, I I couldn't. If someone's sitting on the other side of the map, just sitting and waiting for me to waiting for me to act first, it was up to me to act first, and we could just sit there and time each other out, and they were perfectly okay with that. Yes. And for me, I'm not. I hate that. I, I I admittedly, I am personally, I veer very far away from campy behavior i do think of course i play the belmonts and people might kind of suspect them as a campy player but you've seen me play a belmont you know that i don't play campy i yes that is play I, in I your face agree. i can agree with that i make you fight me yeah. i make you come closer to me and i i make you be in the spots that i want you to be or at least i attempt to right, right. sometimes to no avail but that's the personal style i identify with I find that really fun to me. And the more I kept trying to play in the competitive scene, the more often I came across what is considered safe, degenerate, not, okay, so I want to get rid of the word degenerate, but like safe plays. Plays that you know work without a doubt, nonstop, over and over again, which sounds kind of hypocritical because that's pretty much how I played Falco. But every time I landed one of those interactions, it was because of my direct efforts to coerce that action to happen. Not yeah. because I denied you to do something entirely. Does that yeah. make sense? No, it does. I, I, I have a lot of thoughts about what you're saying. Okay, well, so I guess I just felt like the interactions were the same over and over and over again. And I could see a glaring weakness in my own play styles in that I couldn't slow down. I, I had to keep going. I had to keep pushing forward every time. So I, I, I'm a big person of like, I hate getting timed out. I think that's dumb. I hate sitting and waiting. I think that that to me is, it is a, an excellent style. And of course, it beat me. I lost to it often. I have a hard time waiting. I'm not a very patient player. I feel like I'm ranting about that piece. But the point of it is, I recognized that that's, people knew how to beat me by not interacting with me as much. And that took a lot of the super interesting interactive play style that I, that I enjoy, it took it out. It, it started to fade away more and more. And then kind of that went from like oh, i'm kind of tired of this this kind of climate of the game and it it went from kind of burnout into just like not rage burnout but just frustration sincere frustration that characters that i didn't care about that i only viewed kind of as a move set were so much easier to well, not easier to play but you could get results easier with them yeah. than the characters that i enjoyed yeah um and, and... donkey kong people can trash my can as donkey kong all the time but i have to work so much harder to make richter 
work. Yes. You know what I mean? And I Yes. Oh, trust me. I know more than m most people you know. Well, you're I, Lucas I, main. You know I'm, this. I'm in the minority. Well, and I've been having realizations myself that I'm, I'm not really going to get into too deep right now, but I've been trying, like, uh, just so, you, like, uh, I tried out a couple characters yesterday because I was playing yesterday against uh, our fellow DK guy and you know i was playing lucas Bless his soul. he's he's pretty good actually if, he, he's a, he's if you ever in, get a chance to play he's in, him he's incredible he, he's at pretty the good game. he's incredible at the game okay and he does he does play dk and i i played lucas and got trashed but i was trying other characters and i i, I played rob and bam i got a win and i play chic and i'm doing really well and i'm like i can actually play the game with these characters because it does I'm not because I don't think DK is by no means the best character. He's not even close. But I think every character that DK is better than, he just walls out. And I think that the Smash Ultimate in general, like specifically Smash Ultimate, and you could probably apply this to a lot of fighting games, but Smash Ultimate has this problem where usually if a character is a tier above, it like invalidates every other character. Because I know that like Melee has this problem on a more extreme level. But I think melee is a more balanced game at a top level, whereas ultimate has this problem where at a top level, ultimate is completely messed up and toxic. And like, there's a lot of stuff messed up with like the best of the best in ultimate. And the worst characters are really bad. And then you have like the, the middle tier characters, which are like, you know, because I would say that like Lucas and the Belmonts and everyone around that area is I, I would I would say like mid tier. And then you have the high tier characters that are like that's the majority of the cast that can kind of compete with each other. And I would say DK's up there. And then you have like the top top guys that kind of ruin the meta. Um sure. so it's like that high tier is like actually what the game should be, you know? Uh which, you know, I, I, I'm not here to make a tier list about the game, but I, I know what you mean. Like when you're playing characters that kind of get invalidated, it sucks, especially when it's like, I have put in more time than this person and I know I'm better than them. And yet they can still take games from me because of like a, a, a character that just, it's just, they're just better. They are just better. Whether or not you like the character, whether or not their play style is, you know, degenerate or whatever you want to call it or toxic uh on like it really just comes down to they're better because even even a flashy character like your favorite character that is super flashy could still be a toxic character uh and you could still run into the same problems um right so it's, and you know yeah. no competitive scene is ever going to be perfect and it's it's never going to be everything you want it to be and there is a level of thick skin that you kind of have to have in all of this and in, in all of this stuff but the realization that i had to come to um i remember as i was facing a lot of these things i was getting increasingly frustrated each game um where it it i felt like i was watching myself lose to the same things over and over again and especially in a competitive scene i was sinking money into losing to the same things over and over again and it was it get it just became so increasingly frustrating to me that i had i was turning into not a nice person i was i was raging at people and i you actually probably remember this like we had an argument after one tournament um i at least I, I I wish I remembered for the life of me the specifics of this, but I, like I don't know. If we it was actually an had an argument. I feel like it may have been like a disagreement, but I don't. Maybe I don't, it was a disagreement. I don't know if or, I would call it an argument because I don't think we've ever gotten like heated at each other. Uh, that's fair. Well, it was the most heated I had ever felt in, in Smash, but it wasn't like towards um, me. So that's why I don't really know if it was an argument. Like, okay. Well, yeah, fair. I love you, Logan. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I remember I, this memory I know, I know in do. my mind. It has nothing to do with like our friendship or our relationship yeah. with each no, other. No, no, and I think I it was so much more about. my frustration with the game and the way that it was played and the way that I had lost was so frustrating to me. I remember going to bed that night and sincerely, like, just crying to sleep 
because I like I went home that night and I laid down knowing that a part of me had died that day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I it's weird. I feel like I've been there in a way too. not not in the not in the same exact way, but I know what you mean when you say that like. Yeah, but so okay. Um thank you for sharing that. That's Yeah, that's a lot. And I I also know that it's like it's not as simple as just like you know the 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 characters are better than mine. So I'm going to sure. be upset yeah. about it. You know, it's like it's way deeper than that because you know, you're explaining your history of like wanting to be one of the greats and you want to show people why games matter to you and then the game that comes out that's the biggest fighting game it's one of the biggest fighting games of all time uh and it you know it's the one you've been putting all your time into and this one not only not only does this one it doesn't have like your favorite characters and when your favorite character does get in there's a lot of hate and toxicity around him and when you try to go out and compete you're losing to you know, people because they're they're playing better characters, they're playing playstyles that are just not fun to deal with. And you're like, you know what I mean? Like this is this is what you're telling me, right? And it's just like like everything about this game was like going against allowing you to kind of pursue your dream because like it was like rubbing you in all the wrong ways. Uh and it yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like well I mean, this isn't even to, I haven't even mentioned my actual experience with some people within the scene. Well, that, yeah, like, but that, I don't think that's Smash specific because. No, but, you know, it just, it added on, it tacked on to everything else well, where yeah, like. Yeah, competitive, competitive scenes. And I'm, I'm talking any competitive scene will have toxicity in it. And that's just something if you sure. want to be a competitor if you want to be the best at something that that is just something that comes with it um unfortunately i that's something I well learned, but so. there was there was some there there was a couple of things that was like i got hit in the head with a skateboard because some guy had it pat, attached to the back of his head or to his backpack and as he turned i got hit in the head with the skateboard and I, it gave me a headache the whole time and not a single thing was done to justify that for me i lost that match and then i lost the next match because i had a headache and it was a terrible night uh, anyway yeah so i i'm interested i know we've been going for a while but i'm interested in because i think with this where we differ in this because i i agree with you in terms of like the game is not balanced in the way where like it's a very uh unrewarding game to play sometimes and it just it feels very unfair a lot of the time like there there's a lot of fighting games out there that you know of course there are, are top tiers and there are characters that are clearly better than others you know like i feel like every fighting game has a tier list and yada yada but a lot of them you know they feel they still feel fair at the end of the day it's like even though this character may be quote unquote better it's like it still doesn't feel the same when you lose like like, like if i were to play street fighter 6 and maybe, maybe i haven't played enough street fighter 6 but like there are games that aren't Smash that I've played and it's like I lose and I don't feel the same way I feel when I play like Smash Online or I play against like someone who's like playing a really degenerate character like quote unquote like Game & Watch or Steve or whatever, whatever the, the, the character is in your mind. Um, it feels just so bad in, in Smash Ultimate. Like I don't know what it is about losing in that game to the, the freaking the way the meta is it's just so bad sometimes and the online specifically is so bad for for you know there's a lot of reasons like the input lag and uh stuff that allow certain characters to get away with so much because maybe maybe that's maybe that's the term we should be using is getting away with stuff like i think that's yeah. what feels so it feels so criminal when you play smash ultimate like people are just getting away with the stupidest dumbest stuff and it works and it kills and there's nothing you can do about it most of the time like you have to be playing 10 times better than the other player you need to have godly reaction speed and you know you have to study them 
like so like like it, and sometimes it doesn't even help because their their options are so safe and all that stuff and when you're playing online and you can't react to projectiles you can't react to tether grabs and you can't react to all this stuff and there's a buffer system so they can just they don't have to time their jumps and their moves they can just go ahead and input them early and there's macros to make any player do all of these ah it's just so it makes me it makes me mad when i play online and i'm typically these days i'm a very put together guy and when i play smash elite smash online like that still that gets to me um which is crazy because i've never ever gotten that upset playing any any fighting game offline like ever um so like i could go to a tournament and get freaking three stocked like eight times in a row like lose every match that night and not be as upset as i am when i play online and i see a freaking uh a k rule doing his k rule thing or an incineroar spam in side b or a samus doing their samus thing where they 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 shoot shots and as soon as you get hit they dash attack you and they they grab you from under the platform and they they down throw into forward air down throw forward air they're forward airing you into oblivion because you can't do anything about it uh or freaking links that just like to up be out of shield uh, I just and they're laggy, but dude, uh, I could just I could just rant about Elite Smash, it, but it's weird how like Smash Ultimate is like the Smash game, and yet it is like the worst in a lot of ways competitively. It is like the worst Smash game, uh, and I just don't know how they did it. I don't know how they accomplished that. Um, it turns out when you're playing a fighting game, any sort of input delay and buffer system that is too much. Like the way that they did it is like it's it's just like spelling disaster. In that way even though sometimes smash ultimate can be an, an amazing game and i think offline and depending on who you're playing and what characters you're playing like the game is actually a good fighting game um but it just has these options in it that make it so toxic um so i don't know if that speaks to you uh oh yeah well so <laughs> that goes that goes very much into when i didn't have the characters I had the mechanics, but then the mechanics were are faulty in a lot of ways. Partially due to the fact that it was never meant to be a fighting game. It's a party game. It, it is kind of a fighting game. It's a fighting party game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's where the the at its base level, we kind of have to face the reality that like what the creator of Smash has intended for the game is not what the fighting game community has intended for the game. And because those two things don't align, there's always going to be mechanical issues and imbalance and, and stuff because they're not going to care. Why do they care? You know, they kind of care, but they don't care that much, well, it's, especially Nintendo. You know, what because they me. freaking. Well, what bothers me the most is that they're like, they got one foot in the door and one foot out. And I just, I hate that because. It, they clearly care about the competitive scene to some extent. Like, I'm not saying that, like, they actually care the way that, like, they should. Um, and, you know, they the, Nintendo has the reasons. Sakurai has his reasons. But, like, the fact that they would even patch the game to nerf or buff characters means that they do care at least a little bit. And the fact that they even added small battlefield, that didn't used to be in the game. They added that. Uh, and it was a, a purely a competitive thing. Um, so same with like adding the ability to have any music on those on the final destination and battlefield stages like that's also a very competitive decision so they they do care a little bit but it's like if you guys really cared you wouldn't you would do way more than this um it's i just don't like the weird half and half like either be competitive or don't be like don't i'm sick of this weird half and half stuff that, that's what bothers me All right well, so I guess it comes down to I was listening to Meta of Smash is what he was called. I can't I don't know what he's called yeah, now. Yeah, he's called Mostrix now, I believe. Mostrix. M O S and then T T R I X X or something. Uh but yeah, I know yeah. I know what you're talking about. He's a cool guy. He was I was listening to a lot of his commentary as I was struggling with a lot of this. And you know, I was I was very vocal about characters I hated. Of about mechanics I hated. I complained about it a lot. I was I was being a drawn a lot. I was I was <laughs> drawing all over the place. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh and I was listening to him and he kind of says he said something along the lines of, you know what? Steve's in the game. 
Donkey Kong's in the game. Um, the Belmonts suck. Deal with it. Either deal with it or play a different game. Yeah. Because it's not yep. changing. There's never going to be another patch. Yep. There's never going to be a, another thing. As wishful as the community might wish that there would be another patch, I doubt it. Unless they... Te- the only way that I see a new patch happening is similar to like what they did with Mario Kart. But they just add a ton of DLC again and essentially make I, Mario Kart nine, but like Smash well, at, the next one. Th- this isn't this isn't a Smash uh prediction thing. Like I don't want to get into all that. But I, I do think that if we are to ever get something more for Ultimate, it'll have to be on the next console. Um, so I think like we're either gonna get a new Smash Brothers or we're gonna get an updated version like with Mario Kart. Because Mario Kart does disprove a lot of this whole, well, they would never update it after 10 years. They did, though. They updated Mario Kart after 10 years of it coming out. That is crazy. And it was a big update. Well, That's a big change to the game. They added how many they more, added tracks? more tracks? They more added characters? more tracks than what was even in the base game. Yeah, so... and, and they buffed and nerfed certain uh, weight classes and cars and change a little bit about how mini turbos work and stuff like they they actually like for the competitive scene it was a huge mix-up that was 10 years later well so anyway that that brings me to the point of i had to come to a decision competitively at least i either had to deal with it or leave those were my options Uh but sitting around and complaining about it was not going to help me at all in any way and in that way, I came to the very, very hard conclusion. And I cried when I made this decision, but I had to say, I don't, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to, as much as I want to take that stage in that uniform and that team jersey and, and march onto the stage with the blaring song and the, the dances in the background and the thousands of people cheering yes. my name. Yeah. As badly as I want that, I don't want to get to the finals and have to fight a Donkey Kong or a Steve or a Yoshi. I don't. That yeah. doesn't that sounds awful to me. Yeah. And that sounds yeah. sad to me. And I again, of course, I want to clarify, I have absolutely no problem with people playing those characters. Go for it. Do it. I yeah. just won't play. Yeah, I did. I, did I just want, won't. I did want to say that, you know, the competitive scene, like, or not competitive scene, but like, it, it's interesting how there's different aspects to the game. Um, and I, I do want to say that that uh, before, before I get into that, like you, that, that's a very hard decision to make that you made. Um, and I've had my same wonders and things because I very much want to be a professional Smash player. I very much want to be a professional game, video game player in some capacity. And I thought Smash was my end to that. And it still could be. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not finished with my, my career as a gamer just yet. But it's, uh, it's interesting how you can... Sorry, I, I blanked for a second. You gave up on that dream. And that's so hard. Because I, I see all that crap and I'm okay. I, to me, I'm like, I want the dream more then I want to not deal with the crap. And it seems like for you, it weighed in the other way. Well, it doesn't help that there were other things to consider. I was a married person by that point. Yes. I have a future family to think of. I also love storytelling. And that's important to me too. And the other thing too with it is, I, I just realized with Smash, yes, I love the platform fighters. It's not the only one anymore. Multiverse yeah. is, is mm-hmm. coming back. Nick All Stars is a thing. There's rivals other too. platform rivals too. Yeah. I'm excited for that. And so Smash isn't the only thing anymore. It's not my only way to true. experience this. That is true. And that's kind of what brings me to discover like Mortal Kombat One and Street Fighter Six, where I was able to step into those worlds and, and every single character in those worlds are built for that world. Of course, they have their own metas, they have their own problems, same kind of thing. There's like toxic play, there's toxic community, there's all all of that stuff. And yet somehow these characters, I I enjoy every single one of them. There's maybe one or two that I I dislike, 
but they all exist in this cohesive world. And as you mentioned before, when I lose in Street Fighter in Mortal Kombat, it doesn't necessarily feel quite so like I just got stripped of my identity and I'm left <laughs> naked and ashamed yeah. in this field. You know yeah, what I mean? Uh -huh. I'll, I'll get beaten. And when I get beaten every single time, I can always say it's because they are better. And that's I, every time I can say that, you know? Yeah. That's, or at least they are able to adapt better than how I can adapt. And I can always right. clearly, at this stage of my life, I can clearly identify what went wrong. What were my wrong decisions? Yeah. Where I, and with, with those games, it, it really comes down to what were my decisions. Whereas in Smash, it, it is to a degree, there's an there's a undisputable degree of skill that goes into it, no matter who you play. There's always things that you can improve, right? Yeah. But then at the end of the day, sometimes the answer felt like, well, he won because he pressed the select character button on this character instead of this one. Yeah, especially at a top you know what level, I mean? it, it, you can see that in tournament results and stuff. And I know that that's a little, uh, you know, I may, I may be a little uneducated, but I do know that, like, everybody says this about, I think, competitive gaming or at least at least fighting games from what i can tell but like at a low level it doesn't really matter who you pick you know but the higher up you get in the, on the skill ladder uh the the character differences start to matter more and more um and i think at a very top level especially if you look at the pros of smash ultimate like character picks i think go a long way for them because people that are around the same skill level that's the only way to kind of like sway the the power level is depending on like the matchup and which character you pick and blah blah blah. Um, so it yeah it's dude it's it's so interesting. I um I think it's it's a totally perfectly normal and I think it's a good decision for you to like make these realizations and be like I don't want to play this anymore. Um, and like you know it's not it's not like it was easy for you to say that and you're not doing it out of spite necessarily. It's like it's it's literally just like, you know, it it sucks to play a game where no matter how hard you work, you could still get beaten by somebody, by anybody really, depending on how it goes. That's kind of how the game feels sometimes. Um, I know that that's right. not that's not exactly the case. You know, like if if you were if you were put in a room with a top ten player, like no matter which character you play and which character they play, like it's it's probably gonna be them. You know, like. They're, like skill gaps do still exist, but uh, it is crazy how it how it sways. And um, what was I gonna say about that? Because uh, I, I I wanted to I guess I wanted to finish off with this because you've kind of you've made it very clear kind of like where you stand with this, and I I think it's very it's very valid and very interesting. Um, kind of like the journey you've had. Uh, but for me, I as much as I agree with with a lot of what you've said about smash ultimate it's it's i i can't not play it unless there is a, another smash and there's a couple reasons like i do love smash and i it's I, it's such a big part of who i am um but unfortunately smash ultimate is the it's the biggest like well not i, I wouldn't say the biggest but it's like it's the game everybody plays you know, so when you get together with friends, that's the game that everybody knows how to play and everybody wants to play. And um, I, I think it's very unfortunate that Smash Ultimate is the one that, again, it's like such a good game on paper. And then like the mechanics of it are so polarizing for a lot of people, um, especially if you're into competitiveness like we are. It's such a hard game to kind of want to stick with. But like. Yeah, like when you go to a friend's house these days, that's the most current Smash. So that's the game. If you want to play Smash, that's the one that's going to come up. Like, yeah, Rivals sure. exists. Rivals exists. Multiverses exists. And so does Nick All-Stars. But when you go to a friend's house, that's not the game that's going to come up on the screen. You know, M like for most people. I'm not, I'm not talking about you and me specifically. Um, but it's, I feel like it's just unfortunate that if I, if I go somewhere in the world... That's the game that's going to be played. So I, I value playing with friends 
a bit more than I value, you know, uh, like maybe the competitive aspect. Like, like if I'm trying, sure. if I'm trying to maybe win tournaments, that's a different mindset. But like, if I'm going to a friend's house to hang out, I want to play a game that we both enjoy. Um, and so for me, because, because Smash Ultimate, I don't mind it as much. I don't mind the, the bad side as much as the good side. I think the good side for me does weigh, outweigh the bad side. Um, so I'm like, it just sucks that that's the game. Like, I would love it if I went over to someone's house and everybody's playing Mar- Marvel vs. Capcom or everyone's playing uh, freaking Lethal League or whatever. But like, I'm for, like it's, it's going to be Smash. And so I feel like I got to play it. And I, I do love it. Um, but it, it really just makes me want a new Smash to come out because Smash does have that presence. It has that wide appeal. Everybody plays it. Everybody knows it. And Ultimate is by far like the biggest roster, most music, most stages. So of course it's the no brainer pick for a party, you know, like, uh, and then like, and this is besides, you know, uh, me, me and you talking about the competitive scene, just like for, for, a, for a normal person, it is a no brainer. Um, so it, it just kind of sucks that, that that's the one that we got, uh, you know, cause yeah, well, so I, I do want to be, I, I want to clarify on this. Okay. I'm not walking. I didn't just like you know, sheath the sword and, like, walk away forever in the sunset, vowing never to touch a Smash experience ever again. That's not quite what I'm getting at here. I still would love to play Smash with friends. I, I Like, I still enjoy playing it with friends and having that time with friends and that social experience with friends. It's just that I believe there's so many better things out there, and I also have my limits. I have my my patience level and I can only handle so many I mean like I'm not going to name person by name but like I can only handle so many Donkey Kong thrashings these days you know Yeah and I can and... appreciate very much that this person can play this character this well like I admire it 100% if he decides to go far I think he would go far like I think he'd do amazing I just don't have patience for it yeah, but the, the the thing that makes me wonder is like, how come I'm able to, I could lose for you know twelve hours straight to a player if like it, and I, it wouldn't really affect me that much. So I'm just wondering like, why me and you differ so much in that way? Why do you have a threshold? Why, why do you think you have a threshold that like, you know, keeps you from? Because I, I mean, th- this is a okay. bit more of like yes, a yes. I a have a very, I have a very clear answer. Thing. Sure, very clear answer for this. I don't have time. That's that's as as clear as it is. No, 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 no. Okay, um, no. We we need to get more specific because for me, sure, right. And I will I will talk about that. Yes, I. It's just so interesting to me how like I don't see it. it like let's say I were to fight a a, a friend like any friend. And we were to sit down and play Smash for four hours. Whether or not I won every match, lost every match, wouldn't matter to me. Because it's still shared time with that friend. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, whereas I feel like, depending on how well you're doing, or like how fair the game is, affects your, your experience, like, a lot. Well, you, I think it comes down to... I love the experience. I like I said before, I love that that mind game. That entering into someone's mind and them entering into yours and the two of you battling the wits out of each other and and discovering as close as you can to each other. That to me is incredibly interesting. Um once that journey has been told and I know it's it's interesting because there can become points where I know what someone's going to decide to do. And even if I can't do anything about it and I still lose to it, I already knew that I was going to lose to it. Does that make sense? It's like it's kind of like when you watch a movie over and over as a as a kid I would do this where you watch the same movie over and over again and the the ending becomes so clear every single time that not it doesn't necessarily get boring. But your mind craves something different. 
Does yeah, that make sense? I mean, it sounds to me like you're just like, like it does feel samey when you're playing, but I also get the sense that like, because you're saying it's like the ending is going to be the same. And for me, I'm like, eventually it's going to go in my favor if I keep this up. Because I, I feel like even, sure. even if I lose like a million times, I'm still like progressing and learning. As long as like your mind's in the right place and you're like actually trying to improve. Because, you know, there's a lot of people that grind for 10 hours a day and they're, they're not actually like thinking about what they're doing wrong or anything. Um, but I'm like, as long as you're like actively trying to get better, I feel like eventually it's not going to be the same movie every time, you know? Sure. I fully agree with that. Very much so. But does that tie in and with this the time is where thing? that's Yes. That, okay. That's exa actually exactly where it ties into because, you know, uh I'm doing I, I'm helping you with this podcast and we're doing this sure. podcast yeah. together. Yeah. But I'm also designing a card game. And I'm also writing my own book, uh, my own graphic novel, which I actually would love to talk about at some point on this podcast, um, because my experience with it has been really interesting. Um, so those are three creative projects that take a big portion of my time. But then on top of those things, I also work, uh, I'm a manager at a local escape room place. And I love and cherish those people very right. much. And I yeah. want to I, take yeah. care of those people too. I have a wife and a future family to think about. I, I pay a frick ton of money to live where I live, which I'm grateful for. I'm so grateful for where I live and stuff. But it takes time for yeah. me to take care of this home, to cultivate this home, to cultivate this family, to build these businesses. I don't always have time anymore to dedicate to this one game where, you know, you're so right. You're so on the money with dedication and real practice will make a difference. I guarantee it. That is the only reason that I ever got anywhere. I didn't, I never felt like I had inherent skill. I feel like I had some inherent skill, right, but the right, right, only right. reason that I was good at Falco, the only reason is because I worked my freaking butt off. And I practiced for an hour a day, whether I liked it or not, I practiced and I got an elite smash for an hour a day, every day, nonstop, over and over again. I drilled, you know, I, I put in the practice and it yeah. got the results. Yes. The thing is, I don't have that time anymore. Yeah. Especially not for a game where I only care about 60% or 40% yes. of yeah. the roster so it, it's, and it, I hate the mechanics so much. It's all making sense. I just kind of wanted to clarify that because that's been such an interesting thing to me where like... I feel like even though it's competitive, I can sit down with somebody and have a non-competitive smash session, you know, and have a, uh, and I, I'm not saying that you can't or anything, but, uh, I definitely, uh, I, I, I don't know, like I can sit down and just meme it up and I can enjoy a match for what it is. And, but sometimes I do get frustrated as well. So I think it really just depends on your mindset going into it um right yeah and so i, I definitely the, feel your the whole i don't have time to dedicate to this because I, I i don't necessarily feel that way with smash sometimes i do sometimes i'm like i really wish i could practice more but i'm too busy uh but there's a lot of other things in my life that i feel that where i'm like i don't want to invest my time into this because if i don't have enough time to get like where i want to be with it then i shouldn't invest at all it's just a waste of time like i totally understand that mindset as well which whether or not that's a healthy mindset is a discussion for another day, but I, I think it's a very relatable and uh, understandable, realistic mindset to have, especially with where we right. are at in our lives. So, Well, so this might be helpful to put it this way. In my mind, a one-on-one -on -one fight with a Smash player is, it. I mean, it's very fun to me, but the funnest thing with it to me is I view it as like this elegant dance between these two people of uh, this this mental chess fight where you are putting everything that you have and they're putting everything that they have and you're you're putting it not a, you're not investing a hundred percent but you're putting like all of your skill and all of your all of that elegant dance together and those dances mean something to me. 
those performances mean something the back and forth and the 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 epic moments the the breath takers you know yeah all of those things matter so much to me and when smash started to become less of an elegant dance and more of a mexican standoff it <laughs> that's interesting that's interesting way to it, put it <laughs> Well, it kind of <laughs> did, you know, where it became a lot more important to sit and wait and watch than it did to 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 dance around each other in a manner of speaking. Yeah, yeah. The, I, know. I know what you mean. You know, and, and I know that uh, I speak of it this way, but I also know that isn't 100% of what the experience will be like. You will still be able to have those dances, right? It's just a matter of those dances became too infrequent for me, at yeah. least in mm -hmm. a competitive scene, I, yeah. to care. I think it's... And it, then... It's, yeah. Yeah, 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 with yeah. A, but with friends, I will still enjoy it. But it's that same thing. There's only so much of the dances I can handle that start to become standoffs. And whether you agree with me or not, I see this every time, every single time I play, whether it's with friends or with people I've never fought before or with tournaments. It always starts to end up, you play for long enough and it starts to end up being a standoff. Who, who's going to bait it out of each other first? Rather than who's going to dance with each other, the whole fight. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I, I, the thing that I'm just thinking about is I don't think it's necessarily a Smash specific thing. Like I know Ultimate, it might be more apparent, and you know it kind of sucks that the the way the competitive scene turned out. They the stage list, the the characters that are considered the best, the time limit, um, they all kind of feed into each other. So like, uh, in tournaments when people time people out, um, and things like. It, that wouldn't be a thing really if they, they adjusted the rules and stage lists accordingly to uh maybe make it less of a thing but the, the meta kind of feeds into timing out which is that's a, a whole debate um people have been talking about changing the rule sets but i think you're probably talking more about like being defensive versus being offensive and kind of being forced to be defensive when you're fighting certain characters that just have better options you have to be defensive uh because if you if you try to rush in there you you just get wrecked um so it's like i know what you mean I, I think because of the way smash ultimate works with the buffer with the out of shield options it just is very hard to be aggressive without getting punished um but i do think every every fighting game does have that i think that give and take where it's you can either be patient and react to what they're doing or you can you know swing with a bunch of options and try and do them safely to where they can't punish you for it and you know it's like there's two sides of the coin and i feel like i feel like fighting games have that i think maybe it's just like too overtuned in ultimate um i think maybe you're right in that regard i think i agree with as you're saying that it you know because i think about the other fighting games i do play currently and they also have that um yeah, but that like, issue. yeah, timing you know, out but, and all that stuff isn't going to be a thing because in Smash you can run away. You know, right? Yeah. So that's a that's a when you're saying, I think Smash is a little overtuned to promote defensive behavior. Yes. It, to to an abusive way, where other fighting games don't. And since I identify more with a an aggressive playstyle rather than a defensive playstyle. Yeah. Smash just doesn't come as naturally to me as it once did. Yeah, and I honestly, the more we talked about this, I know I, I've mentioned it a lot, but I think you would really enjoy uh, melee competitively. But maybe we, I would. But it goes back talk about to you with later. melee. Sure, but like at his base stance, then you have to have the same conversation about melee. There's even less characters that I identify with in melee than there is in in ultimate. Hey, but the Star Fox guys are the are, they're at the top. So when yeah, when I say you could that's play, true, that's true. Say, when when I say you could play melee, as sad as it is, what I mean is you could play Marth, Fox, Falco, Jigglypuff, Peach, Sheik, 
uh, Captain Falcon and Ice Climbers. The rest don't, they're not actually in the game. Like, as it, it, sad as that is to say. Um, so I'm, that, that's the fighting game, is the characters I just listed. And then if you're, if you're cracked, you can maybe pull off, like, Link, Ganon, Samus, and uh, uh, freaking, oh, P Pikachu and Yoshi. Th those are like, you have to like be, cr like dedicate like 10 years to those characters. But the other guys, I, like, I, I can see you playing Fox and Falco in those games and actually enjoying yourself because I feel like Melee is a lot more fair than Ultimate is competitively. And there's a lot of things about it that you, that, about Ultimate that you might not like, where in, as a Melee, it's like, in, in Melee, like I would say most of the time, if you get beaten Melee, it is because they are better than you. Um, uh -huh. Like most of the time. Uh, like there are, of course, there are some problem characters, but it just makes you wonder how you, how you, your experience would be in those games. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. And anyways. I mean, I'm grateful that you've, you've tried to kind of get into my head and see really what has happened over the last several years, my journey through this. Um, and where it's, it's intriguing. I just watched Gran Turismo last night with my wife. Oh yeah. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about that movie. That is a love letter to every competitive gamer ever that has existed ever in life. It's a love letter to them. And it wow. is that exact proof that someone can take a video game and make it a reality and become a god amongst the other competitors of that, of that scene. And that, as I watched that, I recognized in myself that dream is still alive. Mm -hmm. yeah, I same. still... To this day, wish that I could be up on that stage, and and have people cheer. I just don't think that Smash is where it would be done. Yes, for me. I I feel like I had the same realization. At least for Ultimate, I was like, I really gave Ultimate a shot, and the more I played it, the more I realized I'm like, this game is not my game. <laughs> it is really not my game. Even though I do love it, and I'm good at it, and I've put a ton of time into it. And I will still play it for as long as it's relevant, but it is not the game I'm going to take all the way. But I, I have that same exact thought as you, where I'm like, I would love one day to go up on stage and show people how much I love games and show people how much I love so, with whatever character I pick and maybe like blow their minds a little bit, maybe inspire someone else to go competitive. Like I would love to do that. But Smash Ultimate is just such a mi mixed bag. And I, I have so many problems with it but who knows who knows uh, again i'm you know i the thing that's cool about all this is that all that time you put into smash isn't a waste because i'm sure that when you picked up street fighter or mortal kombat 1 recently or uh you know when rivals 2 comes out i'm sure everything that you learned from ultimate is gonna apply to it like you're not gonna start from zero you know oh so, sure yeah sure for sure it yeah, just is so that, a matter that, of I don't want to wade through Smash Ultimate garbage. Yes, yeah, to, but, to to be able to really show off that that knowledge. But yeah, what what I'm getting at here is that like your dream to be on stage, like it's like Smash Ultimate was still a step in that direction. It's not like you took a step in the wrong direction and now you had to stay, take a step back and then step somewhere else. It's like that was still on the path. So it's like you know you know what I'm saying. So it's yeah 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 yeah. So I think that's really cool. Like that's something I've realized about really getting into fighting game uh mindsets and stuff like you know the whole thing about con like conditioning reading habits uh like all the all the little minutia things that go into like uh the psychology of fighting someone else um that car that, that stuff carries over you know so like learning how to be disciplined and like train for something like all that, all that stuff carries over so it's those skills don't go to waste if anyone out there is like really uh getting down on themselves because they're like you know i don't have time to put into this new game because i'm only good at so i'm only i'm only good at this game so i i don't want to put that much time into this game and like the truth is you don't have to put that much time into the new game because you already kind of have a head start in a way um so. yeah yeah for sure
Thank you.